Hey folks, everything new under the sun. I'm kind of watching the events, uh, not necessarily in the world, but in North America, uh, transpire. And I think uh, in my understanding about prophecy, um, it, it possibly adds up as it relates to my understanding of Ezekiel 38 and 39, um, Gog, Magog, Isaiah 17, all the aspects of uh, end time Bible prophecy um, that you see on the, the um, timeline of the return of the Lord here. The all these war, these prophetic wars, uh, Psalm eighty three, none of these include um, the United States as a nation, and of course none of them include Canada. Um, and Canada probably isn't big enough on the world stage to have a name. Certainly, it's not in Bible prophecy. There are lots of nations that do have names in Bible prophecy, but United States, you would think that there would be the United States mentioned there, if they are um, a leading world power in the last days. And I've said it before, I think there is maybe a reference uh, to the young lines of Tarshish in Ezekiel 38. Go read the chapter. Um, it seems to be uh, the offspring of Britain, and uh, colonies of Britain. <clears throat> so that would include, you know, Canada, Australia, and uh, United States. But they're not going to war. They're not coming to Israel's defense. They're not um, standing up. They're just saying a few words. And I speculated in the past, well, uh, is that because... Um, um, uh, they simply don't have the political will or the interest to go to war? Or is it that they're incapacitated? They don't have the ability to. Maybe they, there is a preemptive strike of some sort on them. And I think this is uh, interesting, um, uh, the fact that there could be uh, actually a civil war happening <clears throat> in the United States in some of these other countries where... Um, they maybe don't have the ability. They're they're trying to keep their um, uh, the the peace in their own country, and and they've collapsed as a nation economically, and they're rebuilding effectively. This is um, a zero hedge article, and uh, and this is again about the the border crisis in the United States. War is the question. Twenty five red states rally around Texas as battle brews over uh, the Biden border. So let me just uh, go here. I wonder if I can scroll down. Here, here's the map of the uh, United States and these, these uh, 25 uh, states supposedly that <clears throat> signed this that are agreeing with Texas. Uh, Texas is uh, uh, implementing the, the right to self-defense. Uh, and uh, Biden, the Biden administration now has to determine, are they going to send the U.S. Army against Texas uh, to... Um, uh, go against Texas here, um, but you have a split of the states. You have this this right left um, um, uh, liberal conservative sort of split in the United States, and th this is uh, this is shaping up to be effectively civil war against the United States government uh, and you know the left who wants to keep the borders open, and the right or the conservative side that wants to secure the borders. So fascinating thing. Here's a joint letter uh, with 25 governors supporting the Texas border resistance against our rogue federal government. Rogue federal government. Those are big words, and this is uh, fascinating. You know, countries have suggested in the past that uh, um, that uh, maybe uh, Texas would, uh, you know, get out of the um, uh, get out of the U.S., become their own country, for example. Um, and uh, many uh, states have suggested that in in the past, uh, it's a it's a fascinating thing. And uh, here you go, Elon Musk uh, uh, tweeting wow uh, to this. And uh, you know, again, is the United States Army going to uh, come out and attempt to um, go against Texas in this case? Uh, Ron DeSantis says, if the Constitution really made states powerless to defend themselves against an invasion, it wouldn't have been ratified in the first place, and Texas would never have joined the Union when it did. Texas is upholding the law while Biden is floating it. So we have the situation where, again, uh, you know, you, you see what is uh, really the beginnings, uh, you know, something amounting to uh, a civil war occurring in the U.S. where they can't decide one way or the other because the government is against uh, the citizens, etc. Now, we have a similar thing in Canada. So Tucker Carlson came to Alberta uh, to speak in Canada, and <clears throat> the liberals, the left, is just going nuts that this guy is a uh, right-wing extremist, uh, um, uh, you know, against uh, homosexuals, homophobic, uh, a hate speech monger, all these things. Uh, and, and so we had the federal uh, 
uh, liberal uh, members of parliament coming out and uh, and uh, saying that uh, they're bringing mega conservatism. Liberal ministers blast Alberta Premier Daniel Smith for hosting Tucker Carlson. Do not summon the dogs of mega conservatism. So they're using the same talking points as the left does in the U.S. Related to conservatism, calling calling it extremist and far right and all these things. Meanwhile, these people are having just a you know a conversation. You know, uh, you've got uh, uh, you've got uh, Jordan Peterson there, um, Daniel Smith, there, the premier, Tucker Carlson, and uh, Mr. Black there. Uh, four, uh, four of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's cabinet ministers appeared before reporters Thursday to condemn Alberta Premier Daniel Smith's decision to meet with former Fox News personality Tucker Carlson. Again, there, you know, on the on the way out, reporters were uh, asking to talk to people who went to this convention, uh, effectively, you know, suggesting that they're uh, right wing extremists um, and uh, and terrorists. It's incredible. We live in this day and age, and a guy like Tucker Carlson is an extremist. Uh, he is uh, far from uh, an extremist, I think. He has different ideas about things. Um, but this is the way the left is going. They're trying to demonize and, uh, you know, uh, suggest uh, to all the people that follow them that, uh, you know, these people are uh, uh, terrorists and uh, should be put in jail and are, are hate speech mongers. It's absolutely incredible. And, and so this is brewing. This is the left-right battle in Canada now, uh, you have you know the trucker convoy deemed illegal, uh, and the Liberal Party is now on its heels and has been for a while actually. Uh, support is going downwards. Uh, ministers are resigning uh, because of the uh, federal uh, uh, judge uh, suggesting that uh, the again the emer- the uh, implication the implementation of the Emergencies Act in Canada during the trucker convoy was absolutely illegal and absolutely against our Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And so we have this illegal activity going on, and the left is going crazy. Uh, and uh, this is going to lead to a left-right breakdown, uh, I think, uh, of society, uh, as people just go nuts as they're you know standing on whatever they believe is the truth. Um, the left follows mainstream media. The right is all alternative media. And so you have this great setup for uh, civil war. Uh, in North America. And would we be distracted from uh, uh, any sort of Middle East war? Absolutely. Um, you know, are are people going to join the army <clears throat> uh, willingly if, if there's no conscription related to these things? Probably not. Um, so it, it's a fascinating thing. And so then you have this. This is your hedge. Uh, um, the uh, uh, minutes to midnight clock, the doomsday clock, and uh, in 2024, it is 90 seconds. Now, though, in 2024, the clock ticked even further to just 90 seconds, the same position it found itself in the start of last year. So we have this uh, idea uh, from, um, oh, what is it? I always forget the, the name of <clears throat> these people, the Atomic Scientists, uh, the Atomic Scientist uh, Bulletin. And uh, 90 seconds to midnight, they haven't really moved this, even with the war in Ukraine, which they probably should have. Um, but they don't want to um, scare people because if it gets to midnight, uh, people uh, and news media outlets uh, will be <clears throat> will be showing this, and then uh, you know there will be fear mongering going on and people panicking. Um, so they're trying to control the information, but you and I know that you know this could start at any time. So I think it's interesting. Again, when you look at end time Bible prophecy, where are we? Where is Canada? Where is the United States? We don't seem to be there in any significant fashion. So do we uh, devolve into civil war and uh, and probably economic collapse through that? Is it the left and the right fighting in our nations, which make us uh, politically uh, unavailable for any sort of uh, Middle East war or to support Israel in the last days? I don't know what happens to them, uh, but certainly something does. And no one in the last days stands up for Israel to the point where Israel finally calls on God. And this is when God says, okay, you finally called on me. <clears throat> now I will come and, and save you out of this. So, um, pretty interesting thing. Um, as as I continue to watch the U.S., uh, Canada, and, and try and determine where they are in end-time Bible prophecy, and we're moving towards civil war and, and uh, civil collapse, you know, societal collapse, if you will, because no one can agree on anything anymore, and we don't we we don't have a, a Christian base anymore. Um, everybody uh, declares them uh, themselves to be anti-religious uh, of some sort. So I'll leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.